Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, uh, I'm going to try and catch up on some videos that I've been wanting to put out for a long time. And I'm going to do an update video on the TV. The TV that I was fixing, it's an LG 55 inch. I found out in the trash. Um, but anyway, because I wanted to explore how and why this thing was breaking, I bought more than extra amounts of parts and I just wanted to keep throwing parts at it and change the symptoms, which they did drastically. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at what I have left because this is gonna be uh, pretty crazy. All right, so let's do this. All right, well, you can see I have my TV in pieces and I had to lay it out like this so that I could show you piece by piece what was going on, okay? So um, one of the first things I wanna go over is the fact that we did have a power board like this and my measurements on this power board were pretty spot on um, but except for the fact that there is a standby signal which would go from here to your image processing board or your display board um, and or control panel whatever you want to call it um, the the signal the standby signal goes from this board to this board and then from here it goes to the power buttons and it comes back into this board when you depress the button and that tells this guy, hey, I'm good. And then the signal comes back over here to that jack and it turns on the power supply all the rest of the way. So you start with standby power and then you go to full power, which is when this board really boots up. So one of the reasons I bought extra boards, um, so initially the board that I originally had was getting really hot. For being in standby power, it was getting so hot that I couldn't even touch it that is almost a direct indicator that hey something is not right there so i went and i bought one off of ebay and the one that i bought off ebay let's see this is it right uh, maybe that's not it. Is this the one i bought off ebay one of them has a lot of yeah you can see some of the corrosion right here take a look at some of those tracks you see, there is uh, corroded components on this board. Uh, let's see, over here. Yeah, you can see, look at those. So this is the a board that I bought, and it was called Refurbished off eBay. And see, right over here by some of these resistors and stuff, that is where, you know, your standby power comes out and goes on. But just for, you know, entertainment purposes, I did switch out the original board for this board. They are supposedly the same software revision. I do notice maybe a couple little minor changes between the two boards, but the crazy thing is, is the symptom did change drastically. And that's when I had to pull this board back out. I did a in-depth inspection on it, and that's when I found the corrosion and stuff all over the board. And I was, I was pretty upset about that, um, but anyway, the the vendor even even though they said that it was a refurbished board, uh, these liars. Uh, so this board here, it obviously sat in a, a TV someplace where it was humid because you don't get that kind of corrosion just naturally. So this guy right here is probably pulled out of a, a e waste TV that was sitting out in the weather. And um, so anyway, it would get like picture hangs and stuff like that. It just uh, a bunch of artifact. So um, I put the original board back in. I was like, all right, you know something? Um, because with the original board, what, what the symptom was is the TV would turn off and it would turn off after a couple seconds. And it, it did change when I went to this guy. So I was like, you know something? I am just gonna go out and get another board. So I have this board right here, which I put in. This one here is a brand new board. It's it's not refurbished, it's brand new, uh, original stock. And while I was at it, I went out and got a brand new power supply. And I changed all these out in series just to see what the symptoms did, how they changed. And believe it or not, they did change a little bit. And then I got to this little board right here. And this guy takes your, um, your image and it distributes it between two different sections of your TV. So it's like a multiplexer. Multiplexer takes an image and it can divide it up. And uh, anyway, I'll, I'll get to that in just a moment. But um, in the end, 
I, I knew down in my heart that none of that was going to solve the problem because LG TVs, they have a long history with LED drivers. But anyway, um, the reason that I can do this and, and just go down the rabbit hole with some of these repairs is because for one, YouTube is going to pay me money for these videos, which definitely cuts down on the loss. For two, I can actually take these parts and put them back on the market because they were working, they were functioning. The symptom stayed the same regardless of what parts I threw in. So uh, the board I got my money back on, that one's obviously uh, gonna go in one of my bins and it's gonna go in one of my bins because there are certain components on the surface here, especially like some of these USB ports and stuff. Um, very nice to have those because those get boogered up and also these little clips right here Sometimes these get boogered up and it's nice to have some of those extra laying around as well. So anyway, I have all my parts. The TV symptom technically did change. I changed out the power supply today. I've been waiting for a long time because I knew it wasn't really going to solve the problem. But then again, uh, I had standby power that was disappearing. So when standby power disappears, the whole machine shuts down. So I was like, okay. Well, this is the the unit that creates the standby power. In reality, what it was is um, as soon as the set notices a fault with the LED system, then uh, it shuts it down. It shuts it down uh, with no notice whatsoever, even though on the screen it looked absolutely beautiful. So anyway, I'm going to take the opportunity to go ahead and show you guys all the different parts because... This is not a loss by any means because I am obviously here for educational content and learning from my mistakes is how you guys are going to learn yourselves. Um, I took this set completely apart and one of the reasons I did that is because I wanted to show you guys what is inside an LED backlit TV. I myself have not taken one apart. There is a whole realm of technology inside this guy um you know there there's ones that have individual lit pixels which are your uh oleds um you have the qleds which uh have subdivided pixels um this one here is region led lit and i'll show you what that is in just a moment um there are other ones which are uh edge lit so they have along the perimeter of the set they'll have a whole bunch of uh high energy leds and uh, what they do is they shoot through a media which um, spreads the light evenly across the surface. And that's what gives you a sort of uh, universally lit screen. But uh, this one here is zone lit. So it's got LED pods and you'll see in just a moment. So let's go ahead and show you what's inside the screen. Because uh, believe it or not, the very thing that I've been showing you is the actual screen. You see that? How crazy is that? It is, yep, it's so thin that um, it's only like what, a millimeter, millimeter and a half thin that you can't really see it too well. And that's okay. This is the part that often breaks if, if it's physical use and abuse um, or it gets scratched up. So uh, you see these two guys up here at the top. These two guys right here are actually, um, well, I, I guess you could say that these zone off your image. So the little board that I showed you guys earlier, this guy, it sits right here on the back. Your main comes in, your main video comes in. It goes through this little processing chip and it divides the video between left and right, left and right. And then it goes down to its perspective line. And that line is one section of the display, okay? And you can see all the different ones that are down it. So these here are on the bottom of the TV and they have really like paper thin ribbon cables. You can see they're tiny, absolutely tiny. And you can see how complex they really are. So these guys are on the bottom of the set and they distribute the video across each zone, all right? And this is what is on the very outside of the set. When you touch the front of your TV, that's what you're touching. And that's one of the reasons why you wanna be so very careful is because this guy right here is the LED. And you can see it's very flexible. It's very whoop, 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 whoop. Very kind of crazy. Uh, so this guy is delicate, uh, but 
the reason I'm taking the set apart is because I'm going to show you the other layers, like the diffusion layers that come behind it. All right. So the next layer, you can see that this one here is uh, semi glossy. You see that? How cool is that? So this layer here, it is translucent and it's got some shine. And these layers here are going to be for transmitting a correct color of white light and to make sure that it's diffused evenly. So the first one we have is the slightly glossy one. Very cool, look at that. So I actually am gonna reuse these materials. So even though the TV is gonna be a loss because there's no way I'm gonna go through and uh, buy the LED uh, drivers, that's okay. Because I really dig these materials. So this is about, I don't know, six to eight mil. Um, which is a pretty thick plastic. Very cool. Uh, the next one here, let's see. And these, these are thin. So the next one is even clear. You can see my hand behind it and it's kind of frosted. And again, it's designed just to transmit light and to smoothen the light. And then look at this guy. This guy reminds me of that type of panel that you see over your, uh, fluorescent bulbs. It kind of feels exactly like that. This one here is a material that I really wanted to uh, use. This is a diffusion grade. Um, and what it is, is when you shine a light through it, it's gonna spread it out. And then these guys here are gonna spread it out even more, okay? So um, I don't, yeah, boy, that's really close. With both of those together, it's almost like it's polarized, uh, which means the light only kind of goes in one direction. And, and they would do that to kind of spread the light a little bit further. But, um, so this is one of the diffusion gradients right here. Oh my gosh, here, look at that so I can drop it down. So look at that. There's all this raw material right here, which I can use. Um, but check this out. So this right here is going to be all your little LEDs. And these are gonna be your zones, okay? So each one of these right here, uh, let's say you have a black on the screen. Well, on modern day LED TVs, what you can do is you can kill a zone to create that dark, dark. Now it doesn't work as well as like an OLED or a QLED TV, but they do a reasonably good job. And you can see all these little plastic toothpicks right here. Those are standoffs for those gradients. Um, and then right here on the edge, it's just like plastic. And you can see right here are my LED rails. And maybe, maybe sometime I will take those all apart. So you can see that some of them, uh, actually, let's see, this one right here is definitely in series. You see that? It goes one to the next, to the next. Huh. I'm going to have to take this the rest of the way apart just to check that out because I am now pretty curious. So anyway, uh, the LEDs, if you know, when they fail, they can fail in a short. Um, and LEDs, they have drivers. You know, if you don't have an LED driver, then they will just max current until they pretty much fail in a short and explode. So they have drivers which drive LEDs at very particular pulses, and that gives you your brightness. So when you adjust your brightness up and down, what it's doing is it's adjusting the amount of pulsing that happens to each one of these LEDs. And, uh, I just wanted to show you guys what's inside a modern day LED TV because that is pretty much it. Now, they, there are those rails, like I said, which are down here underneath this kind of paper. It feels like a paper layer. But on the back, that's where those circuit boards mount, and that is it. That's it. So down there at the bottom, you can see those are my wires that come off of the main board, and they go down to the LED drivers. But if your LED drivers, for whatever reason, are not up to spec, then your control panel will shut it down with an error code that you will never be able to see, and you are done. That is it. So anyway, guys, uh, I just wanted to use the opportunity to show you guys what's inside a TV because, you know, I, I, I always see every single thing as an opportunity. It's an opportunity to learn. I learned something. Maybe you guys learned something. That's what's inside those little TVs. Now, obviously, if you have a more expensive TV, you're gonna have a different technology and you're not gonna have this, this kind of setup right here. 
Um, like I said, the uh, OLED and the QLED, they have, you know, um, pixel by pixel lighting versus like regions. But, you know, like I said, then there's the other, there's the edge lit, and that's usually the least, um, the least correct lighting method. And it's also the cheapest because it's just like one or two rails. And then the diffusion gradient, which is that plastic piece, it's going to be like really dense near the LED on the edge lit. And then it gets lighter and lighter as you get towards the middle of the screen because it's got to spread that light out. But anyway, uh, this TV, I, I just didn't want to consider it a loss because, guys, I, I see this as an awesome opportunity to open it up. Plus, these raw materials. There's a lot of raw materials in here. And, you know, I might play around with this LED system right here. Look at all those LEDs. Now, I might try it out. I, I, I don't know. I might be able to come up with something for those because that's a lot of LEDs in a matrix. So maybe I will test them all out and see. Uh, I'll light them up one by one and check the current. I got a regular DC power supply over there. I will check the current on each one of these just to see which one's pulling off. Because if one of them's wrong, what I'd have to do is snap that one out or take it out of series and now keep driving the others. You know, and maybe come up with a light table or something. I don't know. I don't even know what spectrum these are because, um, I don't know, maybe it would make for a nice indoor garden grow light or something. But <laughs> who knows, man? Uh, all I know is that I want to take this opportunity to show you guys what's inside a TV and to give you guys an update because a lot of people have been writing me about what's going on with this TV. And, um, you know, it's, it's just been kind of sitting here off to the corner. I've, I've been busy. I've been traveling. Um, you know, I, I've been doing so many other videos. Like, guys, I got so many videos. I got, look at this guy right here. I have a BC biomedical box right here. And I've got it to open it up because that one is probably, I might open that one for Christmas. <laughs> because I think that's going to be like my Christmas present box. And uh, it's, it's something special that the guys over at BC, they sent to me. And um, we're, we're going to open it together. Let's do it on Christmas. I think so. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I just want to let you guys know that even though something is broke, always take the opportunity to explore it and see why it failed. And if anything, learn something about it by taking it apart because it's already broke, right? Thanks for watching, guys.